Welcome back to another rebuild I have for you guys here today. Today I'm going to be attempting to rebuild the New Orleans Saints. We're going to start off here on offense, of course, but I have to say something. Drew Brees is one of my favorite players in the NFL. I think he is very, very good. He's been consistently great for this Saints team. He's kept them relevant even when they've had atrocious defenses. But saying all that, I still think I'm going to trade him. He's 39 years old, right? So... He's regressing a little in real life. I think it was kind of shown last year. His arm strength isn't where it used to be. It's still good. He still has great decision-making, good ball placement, but obviously he was better a couple years ago. That's just kind of obvious for a lot of players, right? But he is going to regress, you know, tremendously next season. I'm sure he's going to be like an 86 overall, 87 overall, and it's just going to go down from there. Also, I think it would be fun to have Teddy Bridgewater start because it kind of seems like the Saints want him to be the future of this team. I kind of gave my two cents about the trade in my Jets video, but basically to sum it up, I think it's like a good trade for either side. You know, the Saints got a talented young quarterback in Teddy Bridgewater, and the Jets did get a third-round draft pick. I mean, I think Teddy Bridgewater might be worth a little more than the third-rounder, but who knows. I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo was worth a second-rounder, right, from the Patriots, or from the 49ers. Garoppolo is definitely more valuable than Bridgewater, so maybe he is worth a third-round draft pick. Regardless, I think the, the trade was pretty decent for both sides. But I think I'm going to start Teddy Bridgewater. I'm going to get rid of Drew Brees, but I just can't say it enough. I really like Drew Brees. I respect him. I think he's a great player. Alvin Kamara, a fantastic young running back. One of the best running backs that came out of the draft last year. That's saying a lot considering, you know, Leonard Fournette, Christian McCaffrey, Kareem Hunt were all there. Alvin Kamara might be the best out of all of them. Kareem Hunt, I think, might be, you know, right up there with him. Leonard Fournette's very good, and Christian McCaffrey is, is good, but I don't know. I, I just think Alvin Kamara is so insanely good. Mark Ingram has done well for this team, you know, periodically. He did well last season. It was a really insane running back tandem with him and Alvin Kamara. But I think I am going to get rid of Mark Ingram just because he's kind of old and you don't need that good of a backup running back in rebuilds. Michael Thomas is becoming an elite wide receiver if he's not there yet. I'd consider him elite. I'd say he's like top five to be completely honest. I don't know, like Antonio Brown, Julio Jones, I think are the top two in whatever order you want. I personally think Julio might be a little better, but that's just that's a topic for another day. And then number three, I like DeAndre Hopkins or Odell maybe. And then Michael Thomas, I think he's up there with like AJ Green, Keenan Allen around that juncture. And those guys are all elite for sure. Cameron Meredith has had success in the past with the Bears. He did, you know, get injured all of last year. But, uh, you know, hopefully he can rebound with the Saints. It's not really much of a rebound considering he was injured. It's not like he played badly. He, he just couldn't play. I mean, Ted Ginn is, has found success on this team. He's been good in the past, but he's definitely getting traded. This O-line isn't that bad. Ryan Ramchek, the best part of this offensive line. This Saints team had an insane draft class last year. Kamara, Ramchek, Marcus Williams, Marshawn Lattimore, but we'll get to those two guys later. Ryan Ramchek, great right tackle. Larry Warford, not a bad guard. Max Unger, decent center, but he's pretty old. Pretty sure he's in his 30s. He's 32. He'll get replaced. Andrews Pete, you're not too old, right? 24 years old. You could definitely stay if I need you to. And Teron Armstead has been a good left tackle. He's very, very fast. Where's his speed? Can I see that here? Um, 81 speed. Yeah, he ran an insane 40-yard dash. So uh, yeah, I think he could you know, probably stay at left tackle. If anything, I can probably move him inside or something just to keep him on the team. Josh Hill, Benjamin Watson. I thought he was on the Seahawks. Did he get traded? It doesn't matter. He's going to get traded here. Probably got cut or something and then signed. I could be completely wrong with me thinking he was on the Seahawks anyway. He could have always been on the Saints as of this past offseason. And then on the defense, Marcus Williams, we talked about him briefly. He had a great rookie year. I mean, obviously everyone's going to remember his missed tackle on Stephon Diggs. But I, other than that, though, like he had a tremendous rookie year. And it's like, yeah, that play kind of kind of is going to hurt him for a little bit. But like if he would have went for you know the huge hit, there could have been a potential penalty. That could have set the Vikings up for a field goal. I'm actually not sure if they were in, you know, if they were down by less than three, if a field goal really would have mattered, but it would have set them up for a pretty decent shot at the end zone. So he kind of played it safe, hoping someone else would kind of tackle him. That's at least what it seemed like from the film. He could have also just really missed. I don't know what was going through his head. Marshawn Lattimore, obviously an insane number one corner. He's a lockdown corner for sure. A very young player. Patrick Robinson. Kind of upset the Eagles got rid of him. He had a great season last year, primarily playing out of the nickel. We'll probably trade him, though, because he's getting kind of old. Ken Crawley's a good cornerback. P.J. Williams isn't bad. 
Alex Okafor, or is it Alec Okafor? It's Alex. Okay, so he's getting up there in age, might replace him. Cameron Jordan, probably the best player on this entire defense. I don't know why I said probably. He is the best player on this entire defense. Insanely good 4-3 defensive end. Tyler Davison, Sheldon Rankins, David Onyemata. A lot of young defensive tackle depth there. Alex Anzalone, Anzalone. I've heard it pronounced either way. Pretty young outside linebacker. Demario Davis is like 27. He's 29. Why did I think you were younger? Okay, so you are going to get traded. He's not bad at all, but just because of the purposes of a rebuild, like it's way better to trade him now. Manti Teo, Craig Robertson, not great there. Kurt Coleman, not great either. But yeah, let's get into some trades here. I am giving the Bills to Mario Davis and Max Unger for their first and their fifth round draft picks. Mark Ingram and Patrick Robinson will get me the first rounder of the Buccaneers. I'll stop getting draft picks soon. This one was just way too easy. I'm giving the Colts Craig Robertson and AJ Klein to get their first rounder. Josh Hill, Alex Okafor, and a second round draft pick for Reuben Foster. Also, I just want to mention that the current updated rosters I'm using right now does not have Cleo Mack on the Bears. I'm just going to wait until EA updates their rosters to do that. I could like trade them over to the Bears in like the main menu, but then the draft picks would be all messed up and that would be kind of a mess to fix. So just for this rebuild here, I'm not going to have Cleo Mack on the Bears. I have no idea why it's so easy to get Landon Collins, but Dave and Onyemata, Trey Hendrickson, and Ted Ginn Jr. will get it done. It always feels great taking the Jets' first rounder. I'm giving them anti Teo, Benjamin Watson, and Shane Vereen to get their first round draft pick. I didn't really expect that to go through, but it did. I'm giving the Steelers Elliott and Bromley to get Juju Smith-Schuster. I don't know why it's so easy to get Telvin Smith either, but uh, Drew Brees and Mitchell Lowen? Is that how you pronounce that? I don't know, but that'll get the job done. I'm okay with this trade. I'm giving the Buccaneers Kurt Coleman and Chris Banjo, I think that's his first name, along with our first round draft pick for OJ Howard. This team is definitely a lower overall. It's definitely a worse team, but I think this team has more potential than the original Saints roster. For example, we have Juju Smith-Schuster now playing in the slot, and he definitely has more potential than Ted Ginn. OJ Howard has more potential here than any of the tight ends that they had before. This O-line got a little bit worse just because I don't have Max Unger here anymore. Also, I could make this a 100% scheme fit if I move Larry Warford to left tackle. And then I think if I move Teron Armstead to right guard, he would probably be a agile right guard. Actually, no, he'd be a pass protector most likely. So maybe not. But if I did move Larry Warford out to left tackle, I would be 100% scheme fit because both of these guys fit this scheme. Actually, you don't. Yeah, whatever. There's, I have another right guard that fits this game. It doesn't really matter. I'm not going to do it because I want to start Larry Warford. And then here on the defensive side, this is what it looks like. I'm not sure if this defense got worse or better. I'd actually say it got better because now we have Landon Collins at strong safety. That's a huge upgrade over Von Bell or Kurt Coleman, whoever used to be here. We did lose Patrick Robinson, but that's not that big of a deal because the Saints actually have decent cornerback depth. PJ Williams isn't that bad. Marcus Davenport, I definitely want to start because he is a rookie, does have quick development with insane speed, 85 speed, and he's six foot six. He's ridiculous. But now we also have Reuben Foster in the middle, you know, at middle linebacker. I mean, Telvin Smith at right outside linebacker. This linebacker core got so much better. The secondary, I st still think got better, even though we lost Patrick Robinson, you know, because Landon Collins is there. But yeah, I think this team's actually pretty decent. I feel like they can make the playoffs, but this division is quite rough because randomly the Panthers will play well. The Falcons always play well. The Buccaneers usually don't. But I'll see you guys at the midseason. We are 5-2 and two at the midseason mark. Not bad at all. We just lost to the Vikings. A bit rough there. The Falcons are 6-1. and one, The Panthers are 1-6. and six, And the Buccaneers are also 1-6. and six. I'm sure we lost to the Falcons, you know, at our other loss because we did play them week three. But here's a look at the team experience-wise. Teddy Bridgewater is confident. That's nice to see. Alvin Kamara has one experience point, as does Michael Thomas, Cameron Meredith, OJ Howard, Tom. I'm sure I don't, I don't know his first name. And two from Juju Smith-Schuster. That's cool. And then on the defense, we have two from Ruben Foster and Marshawn Lattimore, and then a one from a ton of other different players. But Landon Collins has to come back to the team. Let's definitely try to do that. Who else is here, though? Ken Crawley, I do want back. Tyler Davison, I do want back. Will Lutz, Teddy Bridgewater. PJ Williams, I think I can replace Michael Floyd. I didn't even know he still played, to be honest. But let's start with Landon Collins. I don't know why, I already mentioned this, but I have no idea why it is so easy to trade for Landon Collins. It makes no sense. He's one of the best strong safeties in the entire NFL, and you can get him for like just three random players that the Giants have like green interest in. I think, honestly, two of them the Giants had a green interest in, and then the other one was yellow, and it still went through. I'm pretty sure that's what happened, but I could be mistaken. But we're bringing back Tyler Davison here. We got Landon Collins, and we got Ken Crawley. Will Lutz at once. He's a good young kicker. You have 59 awareness. Is that what that said? Yeah, wow. Okay, you're not aware at all. 
Alex, nothing like you. That's okay. <laughs> Let's bring him back to the team. Uh, he is coming back. And then Teddy Bridgewater, I do want back. He's going to be the future of this team. Giving him a pretty decent sized deal. I mean, it's pretty, you know, realistic for his skill level. PJ Williams, I already mentioned I don't want, and I don't want anybody else here. So this team did not end up making the playoffs. We went 8-8. Eight and eight. Okay, so we went, what, 3-6 and six after the midseason mark? Well, that's fun. Let's check out the team schedule, though. 0-4 in the preseason, won the opening two games, kind of got destroyed by the Falcons, but then we destroyed the Giants and won two more games after that. Lost three in a row, beat the Eagles, which is interesting. Lost two, beat the Buccaneers, lost to the Panthers, beat the Steelers, and then lost to the Panthers. Okay, so not a great season. It was a very good start, but the ending was just not there. Teddy Bridgewater, however, played very well. 4,341 yards, 35 touchdowns, 7 interceptions. He is definitely going to be the quarterback next year. Alvin Kamara, not bad at all. Um, 1,136 yards, 9 touchdowns. That's a good season. Receiving 1,000 yards from Michael Thomas with 14 touchdowns. Wow, Juju Smith-Schuster, 6 touchdowns. Cameron Meredith actually had a good year too. 4 touchdowns. OJ Howard, 5 touchdowns. Alvin Kamara didn't do too much receiving. I feel like he's going to do a lot more than that in real life. Blocking, how is this? 10 sacks load up from Teron Armstead really isn't that bad. Everybody else played pretty well. On the defense, 129 tackles from Reuben Foster, 121 from Telvin Smith. Tackles for loss, we have 11 from Sheldon Rankins and Cameron Jordan. Not much pressure, though. 7.5 sacks from Sheldon Rankins, only 5 from Cameron Jordan. Interesting. 4 interceptions, though, from P.J. Williams and Marshawn Lattimore. 3 from Landon Collins, 2 from Alex Anzalone, Ken Crawley, and Marcus Williams. 1 from Telvin Smith and Von Bell. We had a ton of interceptions, though. That's pretty cool. Any touchdowns? We have at least one, and that's all we have. It's from Marshawn Lattimore. So we were eighth in the NFL on offense. Okay, so the offense is firing, which is nice to see. The defense must not have been good then. Yeah, it's 26th. All right, well, anyway, MVP goes to Marcus Mariota. Teddy Bridgewater has to be on this list. There he is at number eight. Interesting. Is Drew Brees on this list? I can't remember what team we traded him to. Did we trade him to the, the um, Giants? No, Jaguars. We traded him to the Jaguars, right? Let me see if he's an AFC Offensive Player of the Year. He's not. I, we definitely traded him to the Jaguars. I'm pretty sure he was involved in the Tilvin Smith trade. Anyway, though, NFC Offensive Player of the Year does go to Aaron Rodgers. Teddy Bridgewater comes in fourth. That's pretty cool. Defensive Player of the Year, we have Ruben Foster in there at number seven. I don't think anybody else from the Saints. Jalen Smith won that. Okay, he's an 84 overall. That's interesting. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Saquon Barkley, but Boston Scott comes in seventh. He was our backup running back. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Marcus Davenport comes in third. Nobody else, though, from the Saints. Let's check out the experience. Maybe we have a ton. Teddy Bridgewater should have a lot. He only has one. All right, that's definitely a lot now. But two from Alvin Kamara, three from Michael Thomas, three from Juju Smith-Schuster, two from Cameron Meredith, along with OJ Howard and Tom. What's your first name? I just want to know. Cameron Tom. Okay, I have no idea who that guy is. And on the defensive side, we have three from Ruben Foster, two from a bunch of other players I can see, three from Landon Collins, Marshawn Lattimore, only one from P.J. Williams. He had three picks. Two from Telvin Smith over there, three from Marcus Williams. Not too bad. P.J. Williams is still here in free agency, and even though he played very well, I'm going to let him go because I still want to draft a corner. He did play well, so, I mean, it kind of is weird to let him go, but I think I'm all right with it. I think our rookie could probably play just as well, if not better. Tevin Coleman is the first player here. Trevor Williams, William Hayes, Dante Fowler. Okay, so no one too interesting. I'll let you know if I go after anyone. I don't think I'm going to, though. I have the first overall pick in this draft, and I'm very, very certain I'm going to be trading this one away. So I could trade it away with the 49ers or the Bengals. Give me a first this year, a first and a second next year. That's a pretty good trade, but I kind of want more first-round draft picks this year. I kind of want to get, like, two. Oh, well, I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. That would be awesome if I could. Let me just kind of look around a little bit, and I'll let you know what I end up accepting. I'm trading back with the Buccaneers. I'm just moving back one spot, and I am acquiring a first-rounder next year and a third-rounder this year. So I think the Buccaneers might be taking this one cornerback. I'll show you guys who he is. Maybe they won't because he's not on the top here, but, I mean... This guy looks insane, okay? Le'Veon Bragg, 8.3 combine grade. The reason why I'm not too, you know, worried about the Buccaneers taking him is because this guy looks insane as well. 4-4-2 speed is nice. B plus zone, B plus press, B minus man. This guy looks like the best corner in my eyes. This guy might have superstar development, but this Demarcus Brown dude also fits the scheme, so I kind of want to go for him. I don't know, maybe if that corner's there, I'll go with him, but let's see. 
they went with Mason Engelberger. So, I kind of wanted that guy as well. My plan was to go with him, he was a left outside linebacker, and then move him down to the defensive line. I don't know why the team's glitching out, because these positions are not this bad. It doesn't really matter. I think with this pick, then, I'm going to go with Le'Veon Bragg. Even though he doesn't fit the scheme, this guy still just looks tremendous. Like, way too good to pass up. I could even, you know, draft him and still draft Demarcus Brown, but then I'd have to trade, like, Ken Crowley. I don't know if I want to do that. I don't know if I should go with Le'Veon Bragg. I mean, he has an 8.3 combine grade. It's insane. But there's also some other needs for this team. So let me consider trading this pick away. What can I get? The sixth overall pick this year, a first next year, and a third this year. Okay. That's actually really good value. It's the same kind of thing, but that's a bit worse, actually. Um, let's see. A first next year. No. I want another first this year. That's not bad. I think I might take it with the Seahawks, though. They seemed like they were pretty bad. I think that's the highest first rounder being offered this year. So I'm going to take this with the Seahawks. Trade back to the sixth overall pick. And with the fifth pick, I'm going to be selecting a corner. Whichever cornerback is there, hopefully at least one of them is. How is Le'Veon Bragg there? I almost don't want to take him just because, like, I want Demarcus Brown to play. I'm going with Le'Veon Bragg. I'm going to make this rebuild more fun. Let's just select him. 83 overall star development. How did nobody select him? I knew he was going to be ridiculous. 97 speed, 85 man, 73 zone, 86 press, 95 acceleration, 90 agility. This guy is insane. I think I might be selecting Deontay Chapman with this pick. VJ Beverly looks really good. He has a better combine grade, but I think Chapman has like, you know, better stats from the combine 457 speed is awesome 714 for the 30 cone not the 30 cone the three cone is good 432 for the 20 cone is very good or 20 yard whatever i can't speak right now it doesn't matter i think i'm going to be selecting deontay chapman but then i think i'm gonna to have to trade up because i do want to center let me just say that harvey elliott looks phenomenal but it doesn't fit the scheme. I'm trying to like make these guys fit the scheme, but the more I think about it, I already didn't do that by drafting that corner. So screw it. I'm going with Harvey Elliott with this pick. 80 overall quick development, ranked number four in the entire draft. We took him at number six, I think. 93 strength, 80 run, 80 pass, 83 lead block. Not bad at all. He's going to slide in to starting center. And then I am going to be trading up at some point. I'm not sure when yet. I might just trade up now with the Giants. So I like Alex Anzalone. I do. I think he's a good player. He's very athletic. He can get the job done, but I am going to be selecting a middle linebacker with this one. So that means either this middle linebacker I select is going to move outside or Ruben Foster is going to move outside. I think probably both of them could make the transition pretty easily. But with this pick, I'm going to go with Deontay Chapman just because of how athletic he is. He looks insane. Let's select him. 80 overall, quick development. 80 overall as a field general, 85 speed, 83 tackling, 84 block shed, 82 zone coverage. Or this guy go to college? Okay, if he would have went to Texas, I would have considered changing his name to Jordan Hicks, like two or something. That would have just been kind of funny. But very good zone coverage, very fast. This is a great all-around middle linebacker. With my third round selection, I'm going to go with Mike Cadet. What an interesting way to spell Mike. Okay, anyway, he's going to be my backup strong safety, but, you know, Von Bell got some interceptions, so maybe this guy can randomly sub in and do something. 4-5-4 speed isn't terrible, also considering he's six foot three, also has three pretty decent skills. 75 overall, normal development, not a bad pick, you know, for the start of the third round, I think I just said this was. 88 speed, not bad speed for his frame. 70 zone coverage is not very good, but 83 tackling, 82 hit power, not bad. You know, this guy's not going to be horrible on special teams either. I have another third round draft pick here, and I think I might be going with a defensive tackle. Yeah, I'll go with this guy. Griffin Mines, very strong. 37 reps is phenomenal, actually. Pretty decent top three skills. Nothing flashy, but still could be pretty all right. 74 overall, not bad. 92 strength is actually really good. 78 block shed, 76 power move, 78 tackling. He is big. <laughs> that picture makes him look way bigger than 303 pounds. But okay, he's just going to be like my third string D tackle, I think. So I have another third round draft pick. I didn't know I had three. That's okay, because then I have a fourth, two fifths, a sixth, and a seventh. I'm just going to take all my players because I kind of want to select these guys just to see what they're all about. So I have a quarterback here. Obviously, this guy is not going to play. Let me just see. When are you supposed to go? Early fourth round? I'll probably take you just to see what he's all about. I kind of want this running back, though, like legitimately to be my backup. 
if I can't get this running back, it's not that big of a deal. But Eric Beach, let's just select him to see what he is all about. 4.67 speed isn't bad. Pretty good three cone, pretty good 20 yard shell, and decent top three skills for a scrambler. Let's just see what he's all about. 73 overall, normal development. Obviously, he wasn't going to play from the start. I'm definitely going to keep starting Teddy Bridgewater. But okay stats, he looks like BJ Wiener, if you guys know who that is from Beer Mobox's one franchise. Kind of, I think it's the same character model. So that running back got selected, who I kind of wanted. It's not really that big of a deal. Any decent looking running backs left? No, definitely does not look like it. I'm just going to take whoever's here. I can go with Curry Porter, Denard Leonard, well, that's an interesting name, Donald Mamula, and Keon Campbell. All right, well, which guy do I want the most? Keon Campbell actually looks like he could be really good. He's late fifth rounder, though, so I can actually wait. Mamula, early fifth rounder, so he'd have to be, you know, pretty high on my board if I wanted a mid-fifth rounder. This guy's actually a fourth round prospect. I already drafted a defensive tackle, though. What's your strength? Ooh, nah, that's not good. Okay, so I'm going to take Donald Mamula. What are you all about, my friend? 75 overall was star development. Okay. I did not expect this guy to have star development at all. Huh. 79 speed, 80 acceleration, 89 strength. I didn't even really look at this guy's combine too well. 82 agility too? Okay, this guy might have the start over Marcus Davenport. I kind of don't want to do that because I like Davenport. But I mean, this guy is star development. This guy has so much potential. Hey, Kerry Porter literally just went. He's a 72 overall. Kind of glad I didn't go with him. The only player I have left on my draft board is Keon Campbell, and he actually looks kind of decent. He has a 7.1 combine grade with B medium, B short, B catch, and traffic. Pretty good top three skills. He's also pretty strong. The second strongest wide receiver. Let's select him. 76 overall. He was supposed to go in the first round, and we took him in the fifth round. Okay, so he's ranked number 20, which is nuts. 88 speed, 86 acceleration, 83 catching, 84 catching traffic, along with 84 short and 85 medium. Not a bad looking player. He's just going to be our fourth string wide out. I ended up just skipping to the end of the draft, and the computer drafted me Audrey Horton, a 75 overall free safety. Really not that bad. Like, that was pretty good value. I'm pretty sure they took him in the fifth round. You know, the 29th pick in the fifth round. That's really not that bad of a player. I'm attempting to bolster up the offensive line here, so Larry Warford and two first round draft picks will get me David Bakhtiari. Andrews Pete, a third and a fourth round draft pick, will get me Brandon Sheriff. This is the team heading into the second season, and I think this team is a lot better than last year. So now Teddy Bridgewater has a much better offensive line, you know, to pass behind. I decided to move Teron Armstead to left guard. He went up in overall, and he's also really close to fitting the scheme. He's an 83 overall agile left guard. So with his experience points, I can just easily boost him up to be an agile left guard, and then he will fit the scheme. We have the rookie starting at center, and then Brandon Sheriff does not fit the scheme at right guard. He's actually not that far behind either, so I could easily kind of convert him to be agile, so not that big of a deal. But yes, this wide receiver core is upgraded now. It's nice. Alvin Kamara is a bit better. OJ Howard's a bit better there. And then on the defense, this defense got better too. So I'm starting Mamula, or M Mamula. I'm not sure that's pronounced. Doesn't matter. I'm going to think I'm going to call him Mamula just because I want to. I'm going to be starting him at right end. If he didn't have star development, I wouldn't be starting him. But just because he has star development, I have to start him at right end because he has so much potential. If he, you know, wins defensive rookie of the year, which is highly unlikely, by the way, but if that happens... He will go up tremendously. We also have the rookie Bragg, Le'Veon Bragg, starting at cornerback number two, 83 overall there. We have Chapman, who's another rookie, starting at left outside linebacker. He was the middle we drafted. He went up to an 83 overall at left out, which is nice. Ruben Foster is going to stay at middle. Ken Crowley is playing in the nickel. He actually might not after I spend his experience points, but I still think I want him to play there. Let me see. Slot corner, you're an 80 overall. Yeah, so you are, you are a better slot corner, I think, than Bragg. Let me just see. Actually, he's not. But I kind of want Bragg playing to his fullest potential. After I upgrade Ken Crawley here, he will be a better slot corner, so let me do that. I'm going to get him up to an 82 overall in the slot. Also, just boosting the slot is just the way to go when you're upgrading players. It boosts up so many good stats. Like, this one got 5. Two to hit power, one to man, two to play rack, one to tackle, one to zone. It always upgrades like man or zone, and then just a bunch of other random stuff. I think that's the only way to get man and zone in the same package, is to upgrade slot. So yeah, this is what the team looks like. It's looking good. I'll show you guys the specialist tab over here. We have Ken Crawley playing the slot corner, Juju Smith-Schuster playing the slot wide receiver, Mamula is the starting rush right end, Sheldon Rankin's the starting rush defensive tackle, Cam Jordan the rush left end, 
And then Alvin Kamara starting as the power back, apparently, but that's okay. And the third down running back, and then Telvin Smith is a sub linebacker. This team's looking pretty good, and hopefully we can make the playoffs. At the mid-season mark here, we have a bye, but we are 3-5. and five. Okay, so maybe Teddy Bridgewater is not the answer. This team's an 89 overall. This team should definitely be good enough to compete. We have one experience point from Michael Thomas and Cameron Meredith, two from Juju Smith-Schuster, one from Alvin Kamara, and then one from Teddy Bridgewater. On the defense, we have two from Reuben Foster, one from Chapman, two from Bragg, and then one from a couple other players. So Michael Thomas has to come back to the team. Definitely want to do that. Uh, Brendan Sheriff does as well. Cameron Meredith, Sheldon Rankins are two other players I want. Von Bell, I'm going to let go. Zach Lyon, I'm going to let go. So let's start off with Brendan Sheriff. We have $72 million to bring back these players here. Let's get the guard out of Iowa back. He is coming back to the team. Michael Thomas, very young wide receiver still out of Ohio State. Has superstar development. That's a huge contract, but he definitely deserves it. Cameron Meredith had a pretty good year last season. If he plays like that in real life, I'm going to be pretty excited because I drafted him in a couple of fantasy football leagues late. Just, you know, just in case he gets back to like his 2016, what was it, 2015 form, whenever he played really well for the Bears. If he can get back to that form, I think he'd be a pretty good value pick late in drafts. But anyway... We are bringing back those four players. So we did not make the playoffs. Didn't really expect to after the record at the midseason. This team went 5-11. How did this team go 5-11? I didn't even change all that much. I literally just made the team better. I hate Madden simulation sometimes. 4-0 in the preseason. Beat the Seahawks. Lost, what, 5 in a row? Or is that 6? That's 5. 1-2. Lost 4. Beat the Cowboys. Lost 2. Beat the Colts. We did lose 4 here, right? Yeah, okay. So... I have no idea how this team played so badly. I understand the division's kind of good, but I mean, the Buccaneers went 9-7. and seven. Usually don't see them play well in simulation, and the Falcons won it like they usually do. Let's check out the stats, though. Teddy Bridgewater, another good season. A lot of interceptions. Okay, so if you take away those picks, <laughs> this is a really good year, but I mean, with the interceptions, it becomes pretty average, but still over 4,000 yards, 33 touchdowns, what I like to see. Rushing, Alvin Kamara was just not good. He almost got 1,000 yards, but he was under 4 yards a carry and only got 6 touchdowns. Maybe I should try to switch up the offensive scheme. I don't really know. Receiving, Cameron Meredith actually had a really good season. 102 catches, 924 yards, and 8 touchdowns. OJ Howard gets over 1,000 yards with 7 touchdowns. Michael Thomas has an off year. Juju Smith-Schuster has a pretty off year as well. 6 touchdowns isn't bad, though. Kamara had 437 receiving yards. That's not terrible. So, somehow David Bakhtiari let up more sacks than Teron Armstead did last season. I don't know. Bakhtiari is a much better left tackle, but it's okay. Defensively, 107 tackles from Reuben Foster, 104 from Telvin Smith, and 103 from Le'Veon Bragg. Tackles for loss, we have 10 from Cameron Jordan, 8, not 10. Wait, what? That cut may have sounded kind of weird, because I would have had to cut, like, mid-sentence. But anyway, we have 10 tackles for loss for Cameron Jordan, 10 from Donald Mamula. And then sack numbers, we have 8 from Cameron Jordan, 7 from Ruben Foster. That's actually quite a bit for a middle linebacker. Still not too much pressure. I don't know how Cameron Jordan isn't doing that well. I mean, 8 isn't terrible, but still. Two interceptions from Deontay Chapman, and then one from three other players, and that is it. Okay, I don't know how we went from having a lot of picks to, like, what, 5? Interesting. No touchdowns, we were 16th in the NFL on offense, and then on the defensive side... 22nd. Okay, so the offense got worse. I think the defense actually got a little better, though. Blake Bortles wins MVP. I guess Drew Brees isn't on that team anymore. Carson Wentz comes in second. Teddy Bridgewater did not make it this year. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Carson Wentz. Nobody from the Saints. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Jalen Smith again. He wins back-to-back -back Defensive Player of the Years. Nobody from the Saints. Offensive Rookie of the Year. Uh, we have Keon Campbell in there at number nine. He's like our fourth string wide receiver. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year, Lacarius Brackens. Okay. Le'Veon Bragg, though, comes in second. Donald Mamula, Deontay Chapman are in there as well. So, let's check out the experience points. This is a really disappointing season. I don't know how this team played so badly, though, if I'm being honest. One from a bunch of different players on the offense. Actually, only four. We have three from Juju Smith-Schuster, two from uh, Cameron Meredith, three from O.J. Howard. And then on the defense, we have two from Chapman, three from Reuben Foster. How many did Braggs get? He got four. Okay, so he's going to be a really good corner. Only two from Mamula. All right, well, if there's a better defensive end in free agency here, I will sign one. I was really hoping this guy would go off, but that did not happen. I have about $40 million to spend in free agency. That's actually quite a bit. I can bring in a lot of players if I want to. Michael Brockers is the first player here. I could bring back Drew Brees. I kind of almost want to, to be honest, because, I mean, nah, Teddy Bridgewater's playing well. I'll let him play out the rebuild and hopefully... We can do well with him one of these years. 
But uh, let's see, who else do we have here? Matthew Ioannidis would make for a pretty good defensive tackle if I wanted to move him in there. I think I might do that. He's not bad. Michael Brockers would also make for a pretty good defensive tackle. He fits the scheme at left end. Run stopper. Okay. What's my defensive tackle scheme? Because I might sign Michael Brockers and then move him to D tackle. Is it run stopper? I actually don't know. Can I find someone who fits the scheme? There we go. Xavier Williams. What are you? You are a run stopper. All right, that makes sense. So I'm going to sign Michael Brockers. Hopefully bring him to the team and then he should, you know, help our interior D-line pretty well. We ended up getting Michael Brockers, so I'm going to move him to D-tackle. Wow, our offense went up to a 95 overall. How did that happen? I didn't even... Was it always a 95? I didn't spend any experience points. Huh, maybe it was. I just didn't notice that then. But I am going to bring Michael Brockers into defensive tackle, so let's do that. He's 29 years old, I get it, but he should be like almost a 90 at D-tackle. He should be good enough for at least two more years if I even have to go that far. But let's see what he goes up to. Should also help the defensive overall and the scheme fit, I'm sure. So he is a 90 overall at defensive tackle. We have an 80% scheme fit there now. I'm not sure what it was before. I turned on auto scouting and they scouted a ton of quarterbacks. There's a lot of good quarterbacks in this draft class. They scouted every quarterback pretty much. Okay, there's a lot of really good looking quarterbacks though. I don't really need one, obviously. I want Teddy Ridgewater. I really want him to be the starter and I want him to do well. I don't know why this weird glitch keeps happening with the like the grades of each position but let's see i really don't know who i want like there isn't anything how are you supposed to go in the first round what are you talking about c run black c impact block c minus medium route and he's supposed to go in the first round gotta be kidding this is a good looking cornerback but i definitely don't need a cornerback corner is like my strongest position he could take over for ken crawley and i could look to trade ken crawley then to upgrade like defensive end that might actually not be a bad idea i'm gonna do that i think devon waters all right let's go with him 78 overall but he does have superstar development okay so it's really rare to find players with superstar this year i don't know if you guys have noticed that but uh you know this guy's really good 92 speed 78 man 86 zone 80 press coverage this guy definitely has the potential to be a beast with my second round pick here i'm hopefully going to be selecting a running back is this guy still here? He is. Okay, there's also some good quarterbacks still here. This guy looks really good. Spencer Antrim, 4-5-6 speed. Wow. Okay, so this guy looks tremendous. He's a mid-first rounder. I'm not going to take him because that's just a waste of a pick. I mean, I don't really need anybody that much right now anyway, but I'm going to go with Trey Nunley, Noonley. Out of Penn State, 21 years old. Good looking power back. Decently fast for, you know, being a power back. A carrying is great. B plus stiff arm, B trucking. I'm going to go with him. He can be my backup running back. He's a 78 overall quick development. But he has 88 speed, 85 trucking, 93 carrying. Not bad at all. So I mentioned that I would be trading Ken Crawley. So I'm doing that now. So him, a first rounder and a third rounder will get me Miles Garrett. So this team's pretty good. I'm just going to say that 94 overall. I actually have to do some stuff first. To get this scheme fit to go up a little more, what I've kind of been doing is just signing backup tight ends who like are vertical threat, like will tie. Okay, that'll work. I don't know if this is considered cheesy, but actually I do need backup tight ends. My backup is like a 30 overall, and I think he's just like the long snapper or something. I don't know. But uh, the long snapper in real life. I don't think you can actually put tight ends as long snappers in Madden, which is kind of weird. But anyway, now we are an 80% scheme fit. There you go. These two guys helped out quite a bit. But this is the team. This team is a 94 overall. 97 offense, 99 defense. I can't get too much better. <laughs> so this team doesn't make the playoffs. It, it's honestly just completely out of my hands at this point. Like, this team should be in the playoffs, like, very, very easily. We have one of the best defenses in the NFL, probably the best defense in the NFL at this point. Miles Garrett, Cameron Jordan, insane edge rushers, Marshawn Lattimore, and Bragg make two very, make for, uh, you know, two very, very good cornerbacks, an amazing linebacker core, and an elite secondary. Like, this team's insane. The offense, you know, 97 overall, not too much worse than the defense. But one thing I do want to change is my scheme. So what I normally do, not my scheme, my playbook. What I normally do is that, like, if I'm running a 4-3 team, I usually go with the Bengals defense because I've just had success in Madden 18 and so far this year with 4-3 defenses running out of that playbook. But it seems that it didn't play well last season. And, you know, the Saints offense and the Saints defense seemed to play pretty well the first season. I mean, we went 8-8, eight and eight, but... You know, it's still better than 5-11. and 11. So I'm going to go back to the Saints. I'll spend my coach experience, and then I'll see you at the midseason mark. We are 3-4 and four at the midseason mark. W what is going on? 
The Panthers are six and two. The Falcons and the Buccaneers are well four and three and four and four for those two teams. Yeah, what else can I do? I mean, I could get a different quarterback, right? But Bridgewater's playing well. He really is not playing badly. So we have one experience point from a couple people, and then on the defense we have one from a couple people. Four from Waters right now. Okay. I'm going to let that go. Miles Garrett has to come back to the team. We just traded for him, so I will be bringing him back. We also have David Bakhtiari, Marshawn Lattimore, um, Cameron Jordan, Alvin Kamara, Ruben Foster, Ryan Ramchek, Marcus Williams, Juju Smith-Schuster, OJ Howard. Holy crap. All right, so I don't think I'll be able to get all these guys back, but let me just you know work some magic, see who I can get back. I was able to bring back Miles Garrett, David Bakhtiari, Marshawn Lattimore, Cameron Jordan, Alvin Kamara, Ruben Foster, Ryan Ramchek, and OJ Howard. I ran out of money once I signed back OJ Howard. I elected to bring him back over these two guys. I don't know why. I probably should have brought back Marcus Williams first, but OJ Howard played well for us last season. I think he had over a thousand yards, so I kind of really wanted him. And I also started going after Marcus Williams because I'd rather have him than Juju Smith-Schuster at this point. But I don't know if I'm going to be able to get either of them. Marcus Williams likes the duration, but that's it. So I might be able to renegotiate with him next week. So I wasn't able to get Marcus Williams or Juju Smith-Schuster, so that kind of sucks. I really hope we make the playoffs and do well this season. We made the playoffs this year. We went 10-6. and six. I still have no idea how this team went 10-6, and six. but the Falcons went 11-5, and five, the Panthers 9-7, and seven, and the Buccaneers 8-8. Eight and eight. It's a really, really close division, actually. We just barely made the playoffs. So we went 3-1 in the preseason. And beat the Giants to open the season, lost to the Buccaneers, 1-2, um, wait, 1-2, yeah, okay, then lost 3, won a whole lot in a row, okay, that's actually a really nice win streak, what was that, 6 in a row, yeah, 6 in a row, lost 2, that is close, and then we beat the Buccaneers, if we would have lost that game to the Buccaneers, I don't know if we would have been in the playoffs, but let's check out uh, stats, Jared Goff wins MVP, alright, well, Teddy Bridgewater gets over 4,000 yards again, 33 touchdowns, 12 picks, again, not a bad season, almost a 100 rating, which is nice to see, Alvin Kamara does a lot better than he did last season. Actually, I'm not even sure about that because he fumbled four times. Last season, I think he fumbled once. I'm not sure what's going on with Kamara this this rebuild. He's not really doing too well. Trey Nunley played well, though, as a backup. Seven touchdowns. Cameron Meredith, again, actually has a really good season. Michael Thomas, almost 1,000 yards, 11 touchdowns. OJ Howard, five touchdowns. Juju Smith-Schuster had five. Alvin Kamara had 616 receiving yards, though. That's a good season from him, you know, in the receiving department. Sack number is still not terrible. I don't know why David Bakhtiari lets up so many, though. 106 total tackles from Ruben Foster, 104 from Telvin Smith. But tackles for loss, we have 13 from Miles Garrett and 11 from Sheldon Rankins. Finally, have a player over 10 sacks, and it's Miles Garrett, 8.5 from Cam Jordan. And then interceptions, we have 3 from Ruben Foster, 2 from Devon Waters, Landon Collins, and Marcus Williams, 1 from Le'Veon Bragg and Marshawn Lattimore. So let's check out touchdowns. Do we have any? We have at least one. That's all we have from Landon Collins. That's all right, though. 15th in the NFL in offense. Defense has to be good, then, if our offense wasn't actually that great. Second in the NFL in defense. Okay, well, that's why we, you know, almost won the division this season. We actually came in second. But Jared Goff, we already saw that. He wins MVP of the 14-2 Rams. Teddy Bridgewater makes it at number 10. That's nice to see. Lamar Jackson's only up to an 82. Interesting. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Ezekiel Elliott. Teddy Bridgewater in there at number 8. Defensive Player of the Year, Ruben Foster comes in second. Jake Ryan actually wins it, though. Offensive Rookie of the Year actually goes to Trey Nunley, our backup running back. Interesting. Must not have been many, you know, rookie starters this year. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to um, doesn't go to him. It goes to Delance Gray, but Devon Waters is in there at number four. Then nobody else from the Saints. Let me actually check out the rest of those awards. Kind of forgot what I was doing. I'm not sure if I'm even going to be able to go another season just because of the cap situation. I'll see, maybe. Depends how this offseason goes, I guess. Um, not offseason. Depends how the postseason goes. But best quarterback goes to Jared Goff. Teddy Bridgewater's in there at number four. That's not what I meant to do. NFC Defensive Player of the Year. I did all that stuff. What am I doing? Best running back. Ezekiel Elliott wins that. Alvin Kamara comes in there at number nine, though. Best wide receiver goes to Sterling Shepard. Okay. Michael Thomas, maybe? No, he actually, actually, there he is. Number six. I don't know how I almost missed him. He's in that list. Nobody else from our team, though. Best offensive lineman goes to who won that? Zach Martin. David Bakhtiari comes in second. Brandon Sheriff, Ryan Ramchak are on the list, though. Best defensive lineman goes to Anthony Zettel. He's an 88 overall. Miles Garrett comes in fourth. And Dominican Sue and Aaron Donald, number two and number three. That is nuts. Um, nobody else, though, from the Saints. Best linebacker goes to Jack Ryan. Ruben Foster comes in second. Best defensive back goes to Marcus Peters. He's up to a 92 overall. Logan Ryan comes in second. Okay. Anybody from the Saints? Nope. And then best kicker. 
We have Will Lutz in there at number eight. There we go. So I turned on auto progress player, so we're not going to have any experience points to look at, but I can still show you guys the overall. So Teddy Bridgewater is in 80 overall now. Michael Thomas is a 95. Cameron Meredith and Juju Smith-Schuster are both 88s. Alvin Kamara, 92. O-line is looking nice. OJ Howard's up to an 86. We have a 99 offense and 99 defense. Just letting you guys know. Bragg went up to an 88. Waters is, a is an 86, not 96. Let's take a look at his stats. How well did he progress? He has 95 zone coverage. So that's the only thing the computer got up. All right, well, Bragg might be looking a little more balanced. Let's see. 90 man, 81 zone, 88 press. Not too much more balanced. But Landon Collins is a 96. Marcus Williams is a 91. Linebacker core is looking pretty good. This team's really good. In theory, this team shouldn't really lose. Just because, um, you know, we're on 99 on offense and defense, there really isn't too much more I can do. But let's check out the overall of the, of the Packers. Let's see if we should win this game. Yes, okay, so we have a 13-point advantage over them. Madden simulation this year I think is worse than it was last year, like how inconsistent it is, but let's see if we can take down the Packers. This should be an easy game. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah. Should have been an easy game, it was not, though. I mean, it's never easy against the Packers, I guess, if they still have Aaron Rodgers. We lost by four points. Do they still have Aaron Rodgers? I'm sure they do, right? Okay, so they do. He had 308 yards, two touchdowns. I mean, like, it, it's never easy against him, but come on, a 13-point difference. I don't know if I want to end the video here, because I really don't think next year we will be that good. Considering, uh, actually, I don't know. That kind of contradicted myself. I said, I don't know if I want to end the video, and then I said a reason why I probably should. But, like, we're a 99 on offense and defense. I don't think I'll be able to bring back any more players, though. Let me just check, just in case, even though we're definitely going to be in the negative for cap. But let me see what I can do, I guess. So I was able to franchise tag Marcus Williams. I couldn't do anything about Juju Smith-Schuster. That's actually okay. We are negative in cap right now, but I was still able to franchise tag a player. So I think I will go another season, and if this one just goes poorly, then this is just Madden simulation just making fun of me. But negative $10 million to spend, obviously I can't bring anyone in, but I just want to see who is here. Christian McCaffrey is the top guy. Juju Smith-Schuster, he's still 24 years old. That's insane. Um, he's probably going to go to the Jets. But that means that we do need another wide receiver, so maybe I'll draft one. But also, we have, like, decent depth here, to be honest. I mean, this guy's not bad. Campbell is the dude we drafted the first season. I'll try to draft a wide receiver, though. I'm trading up to get the first overall pick in this draft because there is a really, really good-looking wide receiver. I'm giving the Vikings Teron Armstead a second and a first rounder next year to do it. The reason why I traded them Teron Armstead is because his cap situation is not negative, you know? So I actually freed up cap for trading him. Everyone else on the team pretty much has negative cap. But I don't even know if I needed to trade up this high, but I just want to make sure I get this guy. Jelani Paul. He has an 8.1 combine grade. Like, he's not insanely fast, but he has very good stats in every other department. He also has really good top three skills. So I'm going to select him. 81 overall. Does have normal development, but he is going to start in the slot. I'm definitely okay with that. And now I need a different offensive lineman. But if I can't draft one, it's really not that big of a deal. I can probably get somebody um, in free agency or something. I'm going to go with Paul Goodley here. I don't really have anyone scouted. I have the auto scouting on, so um, they just didn't get this far, I guess. Let's just go with this guy. Are you anything special? 73 overall. I mean, if it comes down to it, he could start. He's really not that bad. But I'm going to go to the end of the draft and then maybe just try to snag someone in free agency, or I can probably even get a trade to go through. I'm getting a different offensive lineman. I'm giving the Chargers Sheldon Rankins and Marcus Davenport to get Forrest Lamp. Here's the team for the last season. I might want to switch the offensive scheme just because we are a 68% scheme fit. But I'm kind of scared that that might throw off the offense. Let's see. Are we a good scheme fit for anything? If we are, I'll just go with that. Maybe that'll help. 84% spread. Spread was cheesy last year. I'm going to go with it this year. Let's see what happens. The defense is still good, but I'll give you guys one last look at the team. So yeah, the only difference is that we have uh, Forrest Lamp here on offense. Actually, there's two differences. We also have Paul starting in the slot, hopefully. Are you actually starting there? Yeah, there he is. Slot wide receiver is Paul. The defense is still a 99. It's unchanged. It's very good. This team should, you know, steamroll through this through the league. Honestly, it depends on how Bridgewater plays. If it doesn't play well in this new scheme, then I can kind of understand why we won't play well. But uh, yeah, anyway, it's going to stem to the end of the season and hopefully we're in the playoffs. We went 13-3 and this year and we did not win the division. The Falcons also went 13-3. and 
Okay, I mean that. Okay, so that first screen here, that doesn't mean we didn't win the division. But I meant like we didn't get a first round bye because we could have still won the division and not gotten a first round bye. Anyway, Buccaneers four and twelve, the Panthers three and thirteen. Okay, so finally this team played well. Took until now. I think this team should have been playing this well honestly from the beginning. But anyway, one and three in the preseason, won the opening six games, lost to the Falcons. Okay, one two, lost to the Cowboys, won a whole bunch, and then lost to the Giants. So we beat the Falcons once, they beat us once. Teddy Bridgewater wins MVP. All right, 4,360 yards, 48 touchdowns, five interceptions. Wow. Okay, that is a very, very good season. No, <laughs> All right. 1,310 yards from Alvin Kamara with 10 touchdowns. Receiving 1,200 yards from Michael Thomas, only four touchdowns. But OJ Howard got 12. We have eight touchdowns from the rookie there, four from Cameron Meredith. So I guess spread is the way to go. I feel like I've tried it before and it didn't really work out well. If for your center is letting up the most amount of sacks on your team, and it's under 10. Your offensive line is playing out of their mind. On the defense, okay. 110 tackles from Ruben Foster, 107 from Telvin Smith. We have 19 tackles for loss from Miles Garrett, 11 from Michael Brockers, 10 from Telvin Smith and Tyler Davison. 23 sacks from Miles Garrett. Cameron Jordan had nine. He also had an interception. Okay. But we have four picks from Marshawn Lattimore, three from Devon Waters, two from Marcus Williams, one from Cam Jordan, like we saw already saw, one from Telvin Smith and Le'Veon Bragg. All right, so this team played really well, like, all around. No touchdowns, that's okay. We were third in the NFL on offense. I can't believe Teddy Bridgewater actually won MVP with that kind of season. And then two on the defense, or second on the defense. Like, I get it, that was an insane year, but I feel like I've seen players with better not win it. But, I mean, okay, what am I talking about? 48 touchdowns, five picks. That is nuts. But Deshaun Watson comes in second. He's a 97 overall, and, of course, he loses to an 82 overall. That's just, that's just normal. Who's this guy? EJ Irons? Okay. NFC Offensive Player of the Year, of course, goes to Teddy Bridgewater. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Miles Jack. Ruben Foster, Telvin Smith are both in there. Offensive Rookie of the Year, who cares? Jelani Paul. All right, I guess he's our wide receiver. He comes in fourth. Uh, defensive Rookie of the Year, nobody from the Saints. Best Quarterback goes to Teddy Bridgewater, of course. Best Running Back goes to Ezekiel Elliott, but Alvin Kamara is in there at number five. Best Wide Receiver goes to Sterling Shepard again. And I've signed into another Xbox. All right, cool. So I was saying that Sterling Shepard is the best wide receiver. And by the way, that was just my friend signing into my account. I let him use my account for some stuff. But Michael Thomas was number five in that list. Michael Gallup made it at number eight. Interesting. David Bakhtiari wins the best offensive lineman. Brandon Sheriff and Ron Ramchek are in there, along with Harvey Elliott. There we go. Best D lineman goes to Miles Garrett, of course. Cameron Jordan comes in sixth. Best linebacker, Telvin Smith, comes in second. Ruben Foster comes in sixth. Best defensive back, Marshawn Lattimore, comes in second. Devon Waters comes in fifth. Okay, a lot of awards here. Best kicker is Will Lutz on this list. He's actually not. Interesting. Doesn't really matter, though. So I'll give you guys a rundown of the team quickly. I'm not going to bother to spend my coach XP. It's really not that big of a deal at this point. Teddy Bridgewater is only an 84 overall. I mean, he is superstar dev, which is awesome. But, I mean, he won MVP. And he's an 84 overall. Michael Thomas is up to a 97. Elliott's up to an 87. He's looking nice. Who else went up a lot? Cameron Meredith is an 89. Paul is up to an 83. And then on the defensive side, here's a look at that. 98 overall for Marshawn Lattimore, 91 for Bragg, 93 for Waters. This cornerback core is insane. 97 for Landon Collins. If we lose against the Bears, who are 6-9-1 and one, and are 10 overall points lower than us, I, I don't know. I don't know what to do. It's just, that's a good summary of this rebuild if we lose this game. I kind of hope we do, to be honest, just because it would be hilarious. <laughs> Are you serious? We actually lost that game 31 to 7. I saw the score at the top. What are you talking about? I'm just showing you guys that I didn't force win for the Bears. What do you mean we lost that game? Teddy Bridgewater, 140 yards in interception. Tyrod Taylor's on the Bears. He's still playing. Okay. Well, that is a very good summary of this rebuild. That pretty much captures the entire essence of the video. But thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.